so far, as we've been studying series, it is always the sum of a bunch of terms ANs where each of the individual ANs is just some real number, like a half or pi or something. That, that every time it is a sequence of numbers. But what would happen if instead of having a sequence of numbers, you had a sequence of functions of x? That is to say that the ANs were individually functions of x. In this video, we're going to investigate what happens if the an is a function of x, but not any function of x, a function of x of a specific form that we're going to call power series. So the form is going to be that the an can be written as some sequence cn, so, so a sequence cn where the cns really are numbers, a, a sequence just like we've been seeing in the past, but they're now multiplied by this x minus a to the power of n business. So now we can ask similar questions of convergence or divergence, but we don't just have one answer. What we're, what we're asking is, for what values of x does this converge, and for what values of x does it diverge? Our, our major problem, convergence or divergence, switches into one about intervals. So our question is going to be, for what interval it's going to turn out there's only going to be one such interval. For what interval do we have that our series converges? And we're going to call that interval the interval of convergence. And that's going to list all the different x's such that this power series converges. So let's run through uh, a bunch of examples and see if we can pick out a pattern of what's going on here. So first up, I want to look at the sum of x minus 1 to the power of n all divided by n factorial. So let me do the ratio test to try to determine convergence or divergence. I'm going to look at a n plus 1 divided out by a n. a n plus 1 is going to look like x minus 1 all to the power of n plus 1 divided by n plus 1 factorial. And then if I divide out by a n, I'm going to invert and multiply. This is going to be n factorial divided by x minus 1 to the power of n. And then I have some terms that are going to cancel. The, the x minus 1 to the power of n is going to cancel off the n here. There's still one copy of x minus 1 on the top. And in n plus 1 factorial, I can write n plus 1 factorial as n plus 1 times n times n minus 1 and so on. Or in other words, n plus 1 times n factorial. So what I'm left with is x minus 1 just to the power of 1. Maybe I'll put the 1 up there. All divided out by just n plus 1. And what we want here is that we want this thing to be less than the value of 1. That's what our ratio test does. It tells us that we want our ratio to be less than 1 if it's going to converge. But it doesn't matter what x you choose. This is going to go to 0, which is less than the one we need, for all different values of x. And the reason here is no matter what x you choose, suppose you choose a million. Well. If x was equal to a million, yes, you'd have to choose a very large value of n to make this thing small, but we're taking n as it goes to infinity. This is a limit as n goes to infinity. It is going to go to zero no matter what specific value of x you choose. So what do I determine? I determine that n is equal to 1 to infinity of x minus 1 all to the power of n divided by n factorial. It converges by the ratio test everywhere. And this is by the ratio test. So if we wanted to know what the interval of convergence was, that's what we are really interested in, the interval of convergence or the IOC. Well, this is minus infinity all the way up to infinity. And in other words, we're saying that the entire real line is going to be the interval of convergence. That no matter what x you choose, this particular power series is going to converge. Okay. Second example, where now I've taken the n factorial and I've put it down, put it up onto the top, whereas previously it was on the bottom. The ratio of a n plus 1 divided by a n is just n plus 1 factorial times x minus 1 all to the power of n plus 1, all divided out by n factorial divided by x minus 1 to the power of n. And then doing my cancellations, I have an n plus 1 remaining on the top. The, the n plus 1 factorial expands as n plus 1 times n factorial, and then the 
n factorials cancel. And then x minus 1 to the n plus 1 divided by x minus 1 to the n, I'm just left with a single copy, x minus 1 to the power of 1. And this ratio that I have, if I put absolute values around everything, so it doesn't matter about the sign, this is for sure going to diverge to infinity for all values of x except 1, except the case where x is equal to 1. Uh, reason being, if x is exactly equal to 1, then x minus 1 is just 0, and so this is some 0 plus 0 plus 0, it clearly converges to 0. But in all other cases, we get it diverging by the ratio test. But in all other cases, we get it diverging by the ratio test because it does not converge to a value less than 1. So diverges by the ratio test. And in that specific case where the x is equal to 1, what I get is just a sum of zeros. That goes to 0, and so it does indeed converge. So now if I want to write down what the interval of convergence is going to be equal to, the only value that it converges for is just 0, and so I can write it using set notation like this. It's just the single element x equal to 0, that is my interval. Okay, one more example. I've written this as x minus 1 all to the power of n divided by 2 to the n. And I could go, I could go for the ratio test, but I'm actually going to come along here and do a little bit of uh, algebra. I'm going to say this is x minus 1 all to the power, divided by 2 rather, all to the power of n. And the reason why I write it like this is this is just a geometric series. You might recall that the ratio test was dealing with a wider class of series whose behavior in their limit looked a little bit like a geometric series. But this is exactly a geometric series. It's just a geometric series with ratio r equal to x minus 1. So we know by the geometric series that this is going to converge for x minus 1 divided by 2 in absolute value be less than 1, and it diverges in the other case, which is x minus 1 all divided by 2 being greater than or equal to 1. So this is precisely a geometric series, and I can just quote this result. Uh, if it wasn't a geometric series, I could do a, a ratio test here, as I did in my previous examples. All right, so now I want to look at this, this x minus 1 divided by 2 in absolute values less than 2. Uh, first thing I can do is I can say that this is x minus 1 less than 2. So I've multiplied the 2 up. And then what I can say is, is I have to interpret the absolute values here. What I think about this is that this means my x's have to be less than 2 away from the value of 1. So my x's need to be less than 2 away from the value of 1. So if I have my number line here and I put a value of 1 in, then what my interval does is it goes up to 3 and it goes down to minus 1. In other words, my interval of convergence is open bracket minus 1 up to 3. And they're open brackets because I'm not including where they're equal. The, the equal side was over here. It was greater than or equal to 1. So we know it diverges if it's equal. So it's the open interval minus 1 to 3. So what have we got now? We've got an example where it uh, converged everywhere. We've got an example where it converged for a single value. And here we have an example where it converges for an interval minus 1 up to 3 with open brackets. It turns out that those three possibilities, everything, a single point, and an interval, are everything that's possible. Uh, if I have a power series, so a series that has a function and it looks at this form, some cn times x minus a to the power of n, then the three possibilities are it converges only at a point. We saw an example of that. It converges everywhere. That was our very first example. And this is the interesting one. There is some number r, some radius r, and we're going to say that it converges if x minus a is less than r and diverges if x minus a is bigger than r. And this r that we come up with is going to be referred to as the radius of convergence. Now this should make some sense. Uh, imagine that we have some x value such that it converges for that x value. Well. 
Now if we choose a different x value such that x minus a is smaller than what we just had, if the bigger thing converges, then so too we should think does the smaller thing. And indeed that's why we get this radius. It's that for, for any situation where this absolute value of x minus a is between minus r and plus r, for any value of x where that's true, we're going to have it converging.